can't buy It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Tony Horton. You know, what I like about uh, the stories, Robert, is he talks about the tough times, how he made money as a street mime. Um, he would put hat on, his hat on the street and he collected money for his food and his rent money. And this was before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars. Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark fought cancer twice and won. Um, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how he was Steve Jobs' mentor. Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. Um, there's many more. Check out episodes on inspiredinsider.com. One of my favorites, Robert, who no one's heard of, uh, most people, Chris Atigekai, when he was seven, he became an orphan because both his parents died of AIDS and he was the oldest of five children. He became the head of the household, the caretaker for his younger siblings, Within a year, um, while still getting used to the adult responsibilities, his brother died while walking in the hospital. So he formed two nonprofits, I think two for-profit companies. Um, since then, the, it's incredible what he's been through. So check that out. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Uh, at Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. Basically, what we do is we create a systemized incoming referral pipeline, which generates ROI using a podcast. And for me, it's a lot more personal because it's not just about your business. It's about you leaving a legacy for yourself and your guests. Um, because I was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor and he and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany and were the only people to survive. And his words and legacy live on because of the interview the Holocaust Foundation did with him, which you can watch on my about page. So Yes, podcasting will help your business. It's been the, one of the best things I credit to my single best thing I've done for my business and my life outside of meeting my wife because of the amazing relationships, but it also helps you leave a legacy. So Robert, I am excited. You know, this is a long time coming. I want to introduce Robert Hartline. Over the past 21 years, he's started and grown four companies from zero to $12 million. And the past few years alone has taken those businesses from 12 million to over $100 million in sales. And his company was named fastest growing business in Middle Tennessee two years in a row. His companies include Absolute Wireless, which is a preferred partner for Sprint. They have over 59 retail locations. If you think you're stressed out, I think of Robert when I think I'm stressed out. Of all the staff and employees and I can't even imagine how stressed, how stressful you and you, you always seem so calm. Um, and they're all over Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi. He started Dang It Repair, a cell phone repair company, Callproof, which is a software that helps B2B sales teams manage their customers and sales activity reporting. Shift Your Time, which we'll talk about, which um, I want Robert to really dig deep in because he teaches business leaders and entrepreneurs how to get back an extra 40 hours of productivity a month using specific communication techniques. And he uses Marco Polo as one of them. Um, and Hitch, which is an inventive ride share service encouraging employees to carpool. Fun fact, he does all this um, while spending about six months in Costa Rica. I don't know how you do it. Robert, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me. I always ask Robert, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the toughest moment um, in business and then what's been one of the proudest moments and before telling me your toughest maybe moment, talk about just some of the tough parts about retail because it's not, it's not easy. No, I mean, um, you know, we're in a, we're in a challenging environment. I mean, great environment. Our economy is kicking butt right now, um, which creates some pressure on what you can afford to bring people on. So, you know, when you have unemployment right at two and a half percent, I mean, there's not a lot of people out there uh, that are dying to come work. And so you really have to, um, you have to figure out a different reason they come to work with you. And um, for me, it's teaching selling skill. The, the most, in, 
important, most lucrative thing on the planet to do is selling. I don't care. There's not one other profession that pays more than selling. Ultimately, you know, that skill set, man, you're good, right? And then you transition if you want into leader. Not everyone wants to be a leader, but learning that leadership thing is it's helpful. Um, probably the most challenging thing in business. Oh my gosh. Um, you know what? It would have to be dealing with people who have lack of integrity hmm. and, um, uh, people that, you know, honestly from, uh, you know, our school system probably does not do a very good job going over what a felony is and, and the consequences of a felony, you know, you, stel- you steal one of our phones, it's over $1,000. It's a felony, all right? And if you get convicted of a felony, like there is a lot of places you can no longer work at. Man, you can even deliver mail if you have a felony. But some people have never been taught um, those kind of consequences. And a lot of it is in our school system's not built to develop entrepreneurs and get them inspired and all that stuff. And so when they get out in the real world and they realize how hard it is and no one's ever, I mean, you, I walked into my, uh, I remember watching, walking into my, um, uh, my kid's kindergarten classroom and they had this, you know, profession picture, right? It had the fireman, it had the attorney, it had the police officer, the male, it had all these like, like not one of them was a salesperson. Not one of them was a sales manager. Not one of them was a business owner. Like none of those things. I mean, our schools are simply not designed to, ins- I mean, to inspire people. And it kind of makes sense. Imagine if you took the public school system and you started inspiring people to own businesses, who would work at the factories and who would, who would sweep the streets and who would like, like, I guess there's probably a reason why we're not actively promoting entrepreneurship in schools, but you know, I, you know, back to the integrity thing, it, it's just, it's, it's probably a big mess. I've spent a lot of time and energy dealing with fraudsters and mm. you know, we had a, I had a, a person a few years ago steal $340,000. What? Wow. Um, uh, in our, in our payroll company, a person inside the payroll company had created fictitious people and we're paying them for a number of years. Um, but, the, you know, dealing with theft and that kind of thing is, is a nature of the beast. You know, I tell everyone, um, don't go blindly with your payroll service. Make sure you have an errors and admissions policy. It's critical for every business to have. And they basically, that will cover you in the event of someone embezzling money from you. Hmm. Or um, it, it's very common in the payroll space. Super common, more than you'd ever believe. Um, were people just making um, people up and paying them out of your payroll and it's, and it gets, this is like an outside service. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about a tough conversation. You know, I'm sure that people have maybe not been ethical, maybe stolen things. How do you approach that tough conversation with someone? Oh, I, you know, you, you know, generally, well, you, you don't Let's say it's also maybe someone who's been a good performer and, and you've trusted. Well, before. It, well, th- this is, this is something I've learned. Um, you have those conversations when they start day one. So I have six core values in my company, integrity, care, which is caring about the customer, accountability, adaptability, uh, respect, and excite. And I call it, occur because we're from the South. That's how we say things around here. Right. Um, so, but I talk about each one of those things in a new hire class and I make sure everyone understands the importance of integrity. And I talk about, listen, Jeremy, just so you know, I can show you video after video of employees walking out of my store in handcuffs. I do not want that to be you. <laughs> I pay a lot of people, a lot of money to watch my cameras 24 hours a day because fraud is big in the wireless business. And I, in fact, I tell them, I have a private investigator that will challenge your integrity. And if your integrity is not where it needs to be at Absolute Wireless, I'm going to let you go. So when I make those statements, people are like, and I tell people, listen, if you were going to commit fraud with me, I am the worst place to do it at. There's a, you can go to a lot of different places and you'll get away with it. 
like here you're not because i i've got too many things in in play and that has cut our, i mean I, I lost two years ago nine hundred thousand dollars due to fraud wow and it's because i didn't have a system and i didn't um i didn't tell people up front and when you tell people up front you really kind of set the stage like this ain't this guy ain't messing around you know and um, it's probably the most critical conversation I have with people every, every week. I, I, it's called a how to win call at Absolute Wireless. And I spend an hour and a half like walking through each one of our core values to make sure everyone's on board and understand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. What about proud moment? If you look back over the past 20 plus years, what's been an especially proud moment? Um, proud moments to me is when employees start their own businesses. Mm. I really dig that. I really enjoy that. I really think that is a, a great sign of success as we get older and we see people that w were sitting next to us years ago that started their own thing and, and they're being successful at it. I love seeing, you know, I, I support it. If someone came to me tomorrow and said, Rob, you know, I've been working here for the last five years. I'm going to start my own wireless store. Dude, let me help you. I'll sit side by side and I'll tell you everything I know. Listen, I want to help you win. Like, I don't care if you're going to be my competitor. I want to see you successful. I mean, that to me, what we leave behind is the knowledge and skills that we teach other people that go off and do wonderful things. And those are like, you know, symbols of our success when we get to look back and look at the people that, we're successful as a result of spending some time with you. Yeah. So what is that? Is there a case in particular that's happened? Either they rose in the ranks to be a leader or. Oh, I have tons of those. I yeah. mean, I have tons of those opportunities where um, I get to see someone just crushing it and doing well. And I can, I can, you know, talk to, you know, I have, I have, I have team members that I do business with that I buy from them and um because they they offer great service and i really like them and i want to support them and i'm going to keep supporting them robert thank you i mean the first one to thank you this has been tremendously valuable i always learn from you whenever i talk to you where should we point people online we could send them to shift your time where else should they check out online yeah you can check me out on facebook i'm easy to find uh callproof yeah dot com where else Yep, you can visit uh, shiftyourtime.com. And if you want to see me on Twitter, it's Heartline Robert. Cool. Robert, always a pleasure. Thanks, dude. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.